Hello game developers, my name's James and this is episode number 12 in my series about creating mobile games with Phaser 3. In the last episode we wrote the code to create rooms with randomized wall layouts. However, right now it's only creating the first room and that's why everything's empty when we proceed down the level. So today we keep working on the generator prefab. And in the update method, we're going to add a new function that checks in every frame of the game if it is now time to add a new room to the end of the level. This method is called check new room and it will do four things for us. First, it will check if the camera has reached the bottom of the last room, meaning is it actually time to create a new room. Then it's going to calculate the Y offsets in pixels and in rows on the grid. Then we will destroy rows that have already passed to not uh, keep drawing and rendering floors and rooms that are not on the screen anymore. And finally we will append the new room. To check how far we've come in the level we need to add three new properties to the generator and these are called ty offset, a pixel offset and height. The height is a very important value because it tells us in pixels how high or how tall or how far is the total level right now. And we need to calculate this every time we create a new room. In other words, the height is the bottom edge of the very last room in pixels. And we need this value to know if it is now time to create a new room. As a consequence, every time we have created a new room, we need to calculate the new height and save it. So now in our check new room method, we can take the camera's Y position, add to it the total height of the camera and compare that with the total height of the level. If we haven't reached the bottom of the level yet, then it's not time to create a new room and we can stop here. Then the offset values, they're actually nothing else but the, the Y position of the camera, either in rows on the grid or in pixels. Then to destroy all the rows that have already passed us, we're going to create a new method called destroy past rows. And finally to append a new room, we can call the create room layers method, which we created in the last episode. For now, let's not do anything yet in the destroy past rows method and refresh the browser window to see what happens. And as you can see, there are no new rooms. But that's actually not true. We are creating the new rooms, we just can't see them. If we check our create walls method, which is responsible for drawing the walls, we see that it is giving each wall tile a depth value of wall. If you remember from an earlier episode, we are declaring all our depth values inside the init method of the play scene. And now when we have a look at these depth values, we see there is no value given yet for walls. So let's take this opportunity and define all the depth values that we need for our game. For example, we need the, the pickups, we also need monsters and that pushes back the value for the player. Then we will have an overlay, we will have an UI and the menu. And if we refresh the browser window now, we will see that all the walls have been there all along already. We just didn't see them because the depth value was incorrect. It seems to be working perfectly, but there's actually one last problem we need to fix. When you think about it, as long as the player lives, he can keep playing this game forever. That's why it's an infinite runner or also called an endless runner. And you might be surprised what kind of high scores your players can achieve in your games. For example, the scoreboard in Endless Cave, the top 10 scores are already mind-boggling. There's a score of over 1000, which when I was creating the game, I was thinking nobody would ever reach that. So we don't want to keep drawing and redrawing uh, rows and rooms and walls that we have already passed. So we want to destroy them and save rendering power. We do this in the destroy past rows method and we start out by calculating the row number which is the first row outside of the screen. After that we will loop through all the rows in the walls layer grid 
which have a value that is smaller than this row number. Then we will check for each wall tile if it has a sprite, if it's actually a wall, because only if it has a sprite we can destroy it. And then we just destroy the sprite. And that's really it. If you refresh the browser window one last time, you'll see that visually nothing changed, but we know now that all the walls that have passed outside of the screen on the top, they're being destroyed and we're saving rendering power. So congratulations, you're now creating levels that are randomized and that you can keep running through forever and ever. And in the next episode, we will start coding the collision for the walls. I hope you liked this episode. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below or you can come on my Discord and start chatting with me. And please follow me on Twitter. It really helps me if I have more followers on Twitter. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I hope you have a great day wherever you are and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye!